Hello everybody, I'm FHRC Brony and today I'm doing a brake job on my full runner. I already did the front brake brakes uh, quite recently. Now it's gonna be the drum brakes and uh, I already did the other side, the passenger side over there. It's already on and this one's the, the dirty one or the old brake drum. And uh, I don't know you can't see it but that's already new. So this one's already fine. I'll be doing a rear brake drum replacement and uh, judging from that experience on the passenger side, I really hate working on drum brakes, but I got to suck it up. Uh, I am a 4Runner owner and most 4Runner owners have drum brakes on the back. So at least if I once I'm done with this drum brake replacement, I don't have to worry about it for another like 50 to 100,000 miles because I heard from what I've learned... Uh, from what I've heard and read, drum brakes actually last a little bit longer than brake calipers do, or brake or, or disc brakes do. But I mean, I still prefer the disc brakes because they're much more easier to get. But with drum brakes, at least they do last longer. So that's the trade-off. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing this side. Like I said, I already did the other side already. So I'm just gonna show you this side and you guys get to watch my pain and anguish and stuff like that all the frustration I have to deal with. And just to let you guys know, this is not a tutorial. This is just me showing you guys what I'm doing. So don't think that this is a tutorial. Just to let you guys know, when you're working on a car by yourself in your own garage, um, it's best for those who are working on their own cars for the first time is to, even though your car's already lifted up using the jack stands, uh, I highly recommend you put the wheel underneath the car. So that way, if the jacks do end up failing, which probably will never happen, but if it, in case if it does, at least the wheel will help will um, cushion the impact. So at least you can still um, still be able to lift the car up without having to have any difficulties. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this this drum brake out, and I'll go from there. So I got the fan running, and as you can see, I'm wearing a mask. It's not just because of coronavirus, but um, it's because. I'm gonna bang this uh, brake drum out of the out of the hub, and what happens is there's a lot of these dust that comes out, and I know that some of these cars. This is my car is a 1995 Forerunner, um, and usually around the 80s, around the 80s and 90s, they they have a uh, the brake um, the brake material. Uh, doesn't have asbestos, and if you guys don't know what a asbestos is. I know not everybody are car nerds and people who are watching my channel are not always car nerds but asbestos I'm gonna put this in simple terms asbestos is very bad for you and it really it can destroy your lungs and so it's basically it's quite fatal if, if you if you happen to breathe asbestos I'm not saying that my car has asbestos but to be on the safe side I have a mask and um, and I have a fan running, so at least all that dust goes out of the out of the garage and not to my face. So I'm gonna go ahead and bang uh, bang the rear the brake drum with a hammer, and I'll go on with it. Sometimes you gotta whack it as hard as you can. All right, here's the drum brake all in its glory. And you can see why I hate working on drum brakes because a lot of springs and other stuff. The shoes itself is not a big deal, 
but I have a problem with the shoes. Not the shoes, but the springs. Those are quite painful to do, but I'm gonna do my very best on, you know, getting this fixed up. At least I have all the parts I need, and, uh, and it's quite dirty in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and wash, uh, rinse it off with some brake clean. So I'll do that off camera and I'll show you the afterwards. All right, guys, so after an hour of frustration and <laughs> It's really hard for me to portray in camera because I don't have, I didn't do a video footage, but I got the whole drum brake assembly back on. There's the uh, wheel uh, cylinder. There's the new pads right here. New, um, then I put another, um, a new spring in there and stuff. And there's another same one down there. The parking brake is just the same as it is, but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I'll be able to, Put the drum brake back on, but first I'm gonna go ahead and use a wire brush to clean this part off and put some anti-seize on it. And then uh, I'll go from there. All right, that's out. New drum in, new everything inside. I'll go ahead and clean it up here and I'll put the new wheel. Okay, so I am now finished with the brake job, uh, rear brake jobs. I didn't change the front because I did change those fronts recently. So what I'm going to do is drive it around the block. And then as I get to my, to my, uh, to my street, I'm going to do a uh, stop and go kind of thing. Just to test the brakes out just real quick. I know it's just, it's the rear brakes and they don't really do a whole lot compared to the fronts because the fronts do a lot of the braking, do a lot of the braking work. But just to be sure, I always like to do that. So here I am at the stop sign, so the car stops. Okay, that was a little bit more moderate braking force right there. I'll go ahead and close the window for you guys so you don't hear any background noise or heard in the car. Sorry if I'm showing a crappy video footage of me doing the test drive. I would normally use my, my dash cam, but I'm too lazy to download it onto my computer. So I'm just doing it this way. Bit more that's a little bit of a moderate braking that's typical typical braking force uh, especially when people drive fast so yeah uh, like I said the the rear brakes don't really do a whole lot of work compared to the front brakes because when you're stopping from from forward if you're stopping uh, going forward uh, Usually the, the the front brakes do a lot of that work because all a lot of that force, all that momentum is coming from the front. So, but uh, so yeah, so mainly my my front brake disc and calipers are usually doing a lot of the work. But the brakes, the rear brakes should also play a role on stopping the vehicle. And it's doing its job so far, really it is. But it's not like a a big big amount compared to the fronts. That's why a lot of people uh, change the front brakes more often than the rears. Gonna make a left turn over here on the stoplight. This one's a little bit more aggressive.
on this light, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more of a hard braking. Normally I don't do that, but uh, just to, just, you know, just making sure. Oh, these lights are working now. I didn't go for a full dead stop right there, but you know. Fully stops. Left. Car brake. There you go. Normally I don't do that, but you know, I'm just that's that's brakes that we're talking about. I need the car to stop to its fullest. That's why I'm doing this kind of test. Does stop. Okay, I think I can call it a good, a good work. I would say I did a pretty good job. Unfor and unfortunately, I really hate doing rear brake draw, uh, rear brake drums, because they really frustrate me. However, the good thing about it is brake drums do last longer than typical disc brakes. So, and what I mean by they last longer is they can last pretty much. They can last pretty much, pretty much the entire lifespan of the car. So I don't really have to worry about doing a brake job on the rears for maybe years to come. But for the fronts, um, that's where I change more often. So, but uh, aside from that, I did a pretty good job. So hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, quite frustrating for me, but you know I got the job done. So. Talk to you guys again soon.